Pretty as you can see, I'm alive and kicking. So that means I'm safe and it also means that it's safe for you to watch the show. Okay guys, so welcome once again to our latest online talk show where you get to slag, discuss problems that daily average Singaporeans face. So today with me, I have once again two lovely average Singaporeans to discuss issues that we face in our daily lives. Hey guys, thank you so much for coming down Hello. to the show. Uh, maybe you should introduce yourselves and tell what you do to the audience. Hello, my name is Fadi and I'm in marketing. Hi, I'm Stanley, a sociology student. So thank you so much for coming down for the show. Well, before we start, always we start with an informal game. So today's okay. game is going to be Have You Ever. Okay, okay. you can see potato nice. chips and water beside you. So oh, if, the you. Quest if the answer to my question is a yes, you eat the potato chip. If it's a no, you drink the water. Okay. Simple? Sounds yep. good. Okay, so first question is Have you ever placed the tissue packet on the chair to chop your seat? Uh, no, not me. Okay, yeah, great. I don't bring tissue, so... Of yeah. course, it's just convenient. Stanley! Oh no, you're one of those. Okay, <laughs> okay. Second question. Have you ever cancelled the grab ride at the last minute? The driver mm. coming, then you cancel. No. No, oh, it's wow. just bad, man. Wow, 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 wow. I just did that on the way here. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> okay. And then third question. Have you ever queued up for Hello Kitty? No, it's not my thing. Nope. Hello Kitty can be on the same boat here. Okay. What is it about this Hello Kitty? Okay. Last question, closely related. Have you ever cut Q? Nah. It's just rude. It's then just you are not a Q. true blue Singaporean. I think he's lying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you so much. Just to let you all know, the chips and the water were from the last episode uh, because no one sponsored us. So if anything happens after the show, I apologize. Now, mm. let's get back to the main topic. Okay, today's topic is going to be about consultative government. What is consultative governance? I don't know. Please, explain it to me. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Consultative government is, uh, you know, when the government, they consult the citizens before they come out with any policies or any ruling that they want to make. I mean, as a citizen of this country, we should have a right to voice our opinions. You know, whenever the government wants to come out with any policies, so but speaking of that, sorry, yeah. just to sorry to interrupt, but in a sense that, do you think that the the Singaporeans, or yeah. maybe the even the millennials for that matter, yeah. are actually concerned enough to actually want to voice out uh, about issues? I think they are. You can, you can see that you know, millennials these days they are very tech savvy and and parties are getting onto the internet. I think they are, but they are not trying to. I think they are not trying hard enough. Oh, okay. Yeah. You feel I that think, they're not. Yeah, uh, I think they're. Probably they're not very interested. They think that oh, it's just something that happens every day. So it's, you know, there's someone else going to do it. Someone's going to just do the policies for me. So I'll just go with the flow. I think that's where, that's why things are, you know, as it is. Uh, what, what do you think, uh, Stanley? I think adding on to what he said, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the disinterest come from, comes from the fact that they don't see how politics affect their life. So if you're talking about something like GST, CPF, even BTO, right, mm -hmm. for say millennials, some, say somebody my age, it looks very far away, like, why am I, why should I ever be concerned about it? It's, it's so long away, I, I don't have to care, it, it will fix itself in due time. And that's why a lot of millennials are, say, disinterested in, in politics. But don't you think it is important to know, because it is important to know our, our future, right? Like, uh, 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 it is very important to be aware of the issues that we face, right, in our daily mm. lives. So in, in that sense, what do you think can increase the awareness? Maybe there, there should be a way that we can increase awareness. How, how do you think we can uh, do that? I think because uh, since we're on the topic of consultative government, I think Singapore is a very paternalistic state uh, where a lot of things are just instructions passed down to you and you follow it. And over time, that builds out the mentality of not thinking for yourself. I think that there's a big problem for not just millennials, right, but uh, across many generations. So I think a way to start would be to begin with more consultation, uh, okay. ask for more opinions. Yeah. So, okay, consultation, opinions. How do we go about that? Like, like how, how do we even start? How do we begin? What do you think? Any suggestions for that? I think we should have uh, more forums. You know, mm. um, the government can hold more town hall meetings, have more forums with people. For them, with the public, especially the millennials and also the aging pop, and for the, the elderly as well, because as we know, Singapore is an aging population. So we also can tap on that, have a having forums that 
where they can discuss all of the issues and policies that they want to implement. Because at the end of the day, these policies, they're going to affect our daily lives. So okay. having forums will really improve that. That's one of them. This, uh, this is just a general uh, question. Do you think uh, that uh, the millennials, uh, do you think we are, let's not just categorize as the millennials, just okay. do you think that we are holding ourselves back uh, in a sense to share a view? Or you know, to or even to be aware of what's happening. Yes, I think so. Yeah, I think what we can do is. Um, is it because of the lack of awareness? Um, lack of awareness is one. Mm. Another one is I should say there's a lack of uh, alternative voices ah, that represent okay. us. Mm. So by having just by having more alternative voices, we have more ideas, more um, ideas that you know they can implement to help supplement what uh, policies that already in place okay yeah, but you, you do oh, what about you Stanley sorry okay what actually I think he has a good point on the need for alternative voices but mm. I think at the present moment even if we do have alternative voices I think they're not being taken into account like uh, I think POFMA was passed recently the okay. prevention of online falsehoods and I think a lot of academics a lot of journalists professionals uh, people from all walks of life right they, they, they sounded out they sounded out alternatives but the law was still passed with no amendments and I think it was within two months, and I think in that case, even if we have alternative voices, if they're not being heard, then it's going to be a big issue. Like, like speaking of this, uh, like, uh, there was a survey done on the Straits Times where mm. certain things like the ban on chewing gum, with actually more than 50% actually strongly uh, agreed to bringing yes. back the, the chewing gum, mm. but yet it's, there's, there's no movement on it. Like, uh, uh, you know, it's not that it has been changed. So does it now, now I, I put the question, like, does it actually now matter? Like, does it even make sense if somebody actually would want to voice out? Because, uh, I mean, besides the chewing gum matter, for that, uh, for any any kind of uh, any kind of discussion, maybe they feel that, or maybe I feel that, maybe there's no space for me to actually for my voice to be heard. So, what would you want to say to people like that? I think it goes back to the fact that it's not enough consultation. So, for example, right now, if you want your voice to be heard, mm. uh, you either run for politics, or you go to Hong Ling Park, or you go to the internet. So we know Hong Ling Park, you have to apply for permit and all, and that's quite difficult. And now with the POFMA bill on the internet, it's, it's a bit tough to sound out certain things as well because it might come out as a form of falsehood, right? So I think to really get the people to voice out, to remove their fear, you really have to start taking away some of these shackles, some of these uh, restrictions on, on, on Singaporeans. Yeah. Okay, so when we say like uh, shackles and restrictions, right? Uh, why, why do you think Singaporeans feel that way? Do you think it's fear? Fear plays a factor on, uh, on, on their decisions? I don't know. Do, do you think fear? Like, do, are they afraid? And should they be afraid? I, for, personally, I, think, I don't think people should be afraid, right? You should be, uh, you should be allowed to have an opinion. You should be allowed to share an opinion, especially if it benefits uh, others, don't you think? So do you think fear plays a huge part in our society today? Let's put it in general terms, like in a society today. Yes, personally, I think fear does play a huge part in Singaporeans' life. Because um, we have laws that uh, if you say something really that, that some people don't agree with you, and you get like punished the Pofma, for it. Uh, yeah, bring something. back to the first episode. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's where they have a fear of doing certain things. So that's why they are not really, although they have a lot of um, ideas that they want to bring up, that's why they are afraid. Because of now with Pofma coming up, and they feel that, yeah, I think. I better not say those things that I want to say. I, I know I'm just going to get into trouble if I were to say those things. So speaking a bit mm. more about the fear, do you think that the fear is more of something that they believe, the fear uh, from them, or is it something that has been passed down? It's more of, to me, it's more it's been, it's been passed down. Passed because, down? Yeah, okay. because it, it's been, Singapore's, uh, the way things are being run in Singapore, it's been the same since the 80s, 90s, and going forward, I think we really need to change on that, you know, to get rid of this fear. Because when Robert Downey Jr. died in The Avengers, mm. there was a big forum online. <laughs> <laughs> and why did he, spoiler alert, sorry, okay, why did he, you should have watched it by now, okay, so why did he and, you know, what's going to happen and all. But why isn't that same interest here uh, when it comes to, a, for example, a policy or, a, a, you know, something like that? How do, how do you think we can raise that uh, that awareness, uh, uh, how do you think we can raise that interest for that matter? Actually Before you answer mm, that, one okay. thing is this show. 
Okay, uh, next. Uh, besides the show, what's next? <laughs> <laughs> As I was saying, I think that's actually a, quite a tough question because I think a lot of my peers aren't really interested in things like this either and I talk to them and it's actually not that they are not interested but that it doesn't show up in their life. Like, for ah. example, say mm, they're reading Facebook, Instagram, all these things just don't come out, right? Like, you, you follow certain influencers, websites. If they're Singapor Singaporean, it's very unlikely that they're allowed to talk about these things. And mm. if they don't come out, you don't think about it and you just don't care about it. So it's like we are so concerned about other people's lives that we forget <laughs> our own lives when we see Insta story and Instagram <laughs> every day. Yeah, but I think that awareness should be increased. Sorry, I interrupted you as yeah. you were saying. Yeah, I, I think that's about it. Uh, we, we should have, I, I guess, millennials or people from any generation, they should actually look out for, say, uh, alternative news sources, you know, alternative voices and listen to what they have to say because a lot of times, like the academics, journalists, they have something very valuable to say and we're often like, not hearing them. Yeah. Uh, what about you? Well, I feel that yeah, they, we have to have more alternative uh, websites because as you know, the uh, media in Singapore is heavily controlled. Okay. We are actually ranked 151st in the world in terms of uh, press freedom. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah that's a new fact for you. Yes, so I is. think um, in a way that every, from if a very controlled media, it's very hard for people to get um, proper news because the news that we see on TV, on radio, on newspapers, they're actually a bit heavily controlled. Okay. Yeah. So this, uh, but you see, we cannot just target the millennials, like I said, in general society, mm -hmm. right? So I think there should be more platforms that raises, I mean, if you ask me, mm -hmm. My humble opinion is there must be more platforms that just raises awareness for people to be empowered with information. Because information, knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. And yes. I feel that is being, that's, that's lacking. Not many people know. And that's why when you do not know, I feel they stray away. Because I don't know about it, so I'm not going to bother understanding about it. So in that sense, okay, besides, besides the social, social media mm -hmm. platform, do you think there are other platforms that we can use to uh, regenerate this kind of uh, awareness? I think the thing is, it has been tried. Like uh, I remember a few years ago, I was in, I was schooling as well. There was this thing called the Our Singapore Conversation, oh. where uh, personnel from from the state try to reach out to students, you know, people from all walks of life, about what they think are issues concerning them. So I think one of the biggest issues that I remember being being raised out was that uh, Singaporeans want to move beyond the material definition of success. Okay. So that was about six years ago. Okay. And I mean, you, you can see for yourself whether that has changed in the last six years. Personally, I think not. I think we're still very material-minded and part of it has to do with the policies being implemented. Okay, so I think, I mean, thank you so much for your uh, yes. opinions no and this discussion, right? It's, it's so healthy and it's lovely, right? But in that sense, I think this show a truth issue, we hope to raise that awareness for the society because I think fear should not be something that stops people from understanding or you know getting information. All right, we should you know get rid of the fear and be yes. uh, be uh, empowered with information because knowledge is power. Okay, guys, so thank you once again. Well, I want to put this out to you if you have topics that you want us to discuss, or even, even if you want to be part of the show, please. Send us the topics that you want to discuss about. And if you want to be part of the show, please send us your details. And maybe, just maybe, the next show, you get to be one of our guests. We're looking forward to that. All right, so please uh, like and subscribe to our channel. And uh, again, I would always mention, if you're a caveman like me, you do not have YouTube, you can always get us on podcast too. All right, so till I see you again in the next episode, my name is J. Arvind Naidu. Until then, bye.